Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm grateful to be uh, before you all today to talk about House Bill 3320, which clarifies the process that nonprofit hospitals must use to verify a patient's eligibility for subsidized or free care. It should be noted that 60 of 62 hospitals in Oregon enjoy nonprofit status. And nonprofit hospitals, which means that their earnings cannot benefit individuals or shareholders, are tax exempt, meaning that they do not pay any federal, state, or local taxes. It's salient today on uh, tax day. This amounts to a $28 billion tax earnings nationally that go unpaid. In exchange for this tax exempt status, hospitals must invest in the health of their community, including offering financial assistance to low income patients. It turns out most Oregon hospitals have not been keeping up their end of the bargain. So in 2019, this legislature passed a bill, House Bill 3076, that required Oregon's nonprofit hospitals to provide financial assistance to those who could not afford to pay their medical bills. This financial assistant is often referred to as charity care and is meant to enliven nonprofit hospitals' charitable missions. Again, this duty to provide charity care is part of the investment that nonprofit hospitals should be putting into their communities. And again, even after passing this bill four years ago, most Oregon hospitals have not been keeping up with their promise or with the law. In fact, only one nonprofit hospital in Oregon, OHSU, has provided full, fair, and consistent charity care since the bill was passed. In contrast, another hospital system, Providence, received extensive coverage in the New York Times last September and again this January for their systematic effort to pursue low-income patients for payment of bills that should have been covered under charity care provisions. Colleagues, I was horrified to learn of these practices. And so are a few others. The Washington State Attorney General is suing Providence, and Oregon's Attorney General is investigating them. And while Providence received the most attention, it is clear that they were not alone in failing to live up to the obligated financial assistance for low-income patients. And the result is that low-income patients, which are meant to be covered, are sent to debt collectors and sued in small claims courts for bills they were never supposed to pay in the first place. Of course, these people do not tend to have access to lawyers to defend them through this process, and we know that medical debt is now the most common reason for bankruptcy filings, making these families more vulnerable in terms of housing security and more. This lack of compliance from hospitals has immediate and often devastating consequences for patients who should automatically receive financial assistance. So what this bill does is it would require nonprofit hospital systems to screen patients who have bills of more than $500 for presumptive eligibility for this financial assistance. And for patients determined to be eligible, the financial assistance amount will be applied before any bill is sent to that patient. And if a patient applies for and is found to be eligible for this assistance, and the patient already paid their bill, they now need to receive a refund for those payments and costs. Furthermore, this bill would require that financial assistance programs and appeals processes are clearly accessible online. In short, House Bill 3320 contains these and other provisions to prevent that Oregonians eligible for free or reduced medical care not be served with scary bills, and then it ensures that those struggling with medical debt have a transparent and fair process. In medicine, we all live by the code, first do no harm, and that includes how we treat the patients that receive bills for our services. In many cases, Oregonians have experienced the exact opposite. I wanna thank many supporters of this bill, including SEIU, Oregon AFL-CIO, the Oregon Law Center, Providence, OHSU, Kaiser, and the Oregon Association of Hospitals and Health Systems, Oregon AFSCME, and the Cascade AIDS Project, among others. And uh, this was a constructive uh, process with feedback from advocates and health systems. It passed out of the House Committee on Behavioral Health and Healthcare unanimously, and I hope you will enjoy me, uh, will join me in supporting House Bill 3320. Thank you.